And what a lovely morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've talked the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. And good morning to you from... Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning, where talk is real, truth is in the talk, and there is power in truth, and as the scripture tells us, truth will set you free. Good morning, Melody. Good morning to you. Good morning, listeners, and I hope everyone is staying warm in the areas that are cold, mm. and um, um, it was working. Uh, I got a heater by my legs and at my desk, and I'm doing okay. <laughs> it's cold here. Is it cold there? It's cold, but, you know, it's cold doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me until it gets down to the zeros. Uh, but we're only 30, well, we're 31 degrees, so that's pretty. Oh, yeah, we're a little colder than that. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't look, <laughs> but we're, well, let me see. We're a little colder than that. I can't see the, uh, 25 is what, no, 17. <laughs> that's what it is here. So it's in the teens, and it's supposed to get down to zero, and next couple of days supposed to be really, really cold. It's this wasn't, but it's going to get colder. But I have an announcement. Christmas 2017 is over at the Schoenberg House. We are no longer celebrating Christmas. We just have to take it all down, put it away. <laughs> 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 so I am glad to uh, to say we made it through Christmas 2017. It only took us an extra month to do it. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> well, good. Well, yeah. good. I bet you and feel everybody was happy. relieved. You're relieved it was bothering you, was it? No, not me. <laughs> My complaining was bothering you. <laughs> no, I didn't say that at all. No, I didn't I'm say that at you. all. I'm teasing. You know? I'm teasing. Are you? <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm it's Monday. And we have uh, all the... <laughs> It's Monday, and I'll tell you what, it's an eerie, quiet Monday right here because I I am on the same block. In fact, right across the street are two banks from me, and Caddy Wampus from me is the courthouse, and just up the block is the post office. And, of course, everything is closed today, so it's just kind of eerie and quiet, you know, and the snow has fallen, and I'm probably the only one working on the block, <laughs> so. Probably the only one in the office, so I know I'm the only one in this office, but I mean in the offices up and down the street here. Well, markets are closed. We have gold trading in the uh, 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 computer trading, but uh, the stock market, bond markets are closed today. Uh, so it'll be a short week, four-day week of trading today. But uh, gold was, uh, uh, in the aftermarket, gold was trading, um, Let's see where we're trading. Up a buck and a half, so not a lot of action, but up some. Silver's up ten cents at seventeen forty-one. So um, it'll be a quiet day um, in the market. So uh, we're working. So give Discount Gold and Silver Trading a call. One eight hundred three seven five four one eight eight. That's one eight hundred three seven five four one eight eight. So. Um, there was a, a lot of excitement in Hawaii oh, yeah. this, week, oh, yeah. this weekend, <laughs> uh, and an alert had gone out to a a false ballistic missile threat alert went out to all cell phones in Hawaii. The alert sent Hawaii's 1.4 million residents and hundreds of thousands of visitors into a state of panic for more than 30 minutes until emergency officials confirmed the message was sent in error. And the cause of the false alarm, a state emergency management employee pushed the wrong button. <laughs> and, um, so and then they couldn't figure out how to fix it after. They knew immediately they'd pushed the wrong button, but they didn't know how to fix it. Yeah, it took them about 38 minutes to send out a false alarm alert to cell phones using the same mechanism that distributed the emergency warning in the first place. And uh, But the, the airlines were suspended for about 18 minutes. Um, I guess some people just went absolutely crazy. And uh, uh, a lot of 911 calls, and, yeah. uh, you know, the person, I guess, is um, reassigned. <laughs> no, that's what I don't believe. He's just reassigned. Of course that's he is. They <laughs> Probably got a promotion. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, I know that I've got a really nice story about this, but I know that Chelsea Handler, of course, you know how uh, – 
filthy mouthed she is, or maybe I guess her fingers, because she was tweeting all kinds of derogatory remarks, bleeping them out, I can't say them, towards and blamed the incident on President Donald Trump. And Michelle Mockin came back and, and told her to take a chill pill and settle down, and the fact that uh, Hawaii was run strictly by Democrats, and it was a Democrat to push the button. <laughs> so, anyway, they were uh, going back and forth on Twitter with that, which is just, you know, ridiculous. But this is a family, and it's this is coming from the Daily Caller. And they've uh, said, thank God for the experience. How one Hawaiian family turned 38 minutes of terror into a moment of gratitude. It says, in one minute, Jason Jones was running to put the trash out before the garbage truck turned onto the street. If you've ever done that, had to run out, try to catch the garbage man before, before or after he came by. The next minute, Jones and his family were running from what they thought was a nuclear missile attack. Now, think about how this would make anybody feel in any state in any city. Phones all across Hawaii lit up Saturday morning with an emergency alert, ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. When Jones, who is a filmmaker and a father of seven, saw the alert, he had one thought. So it's today. And Jones was prepared. He grabbed a go bag and his Glock 9mm handgun, packed his family into the minivan, and took off for the, uh, I can't pronounce it, Wanea Mountain Range. I really blew that, didn't I? He ignored the speed limits. The goal put the mountain range in between his family and Pearl Harbor, which he believed would be the target. The Joneses would take shelter in a nearby Makui uh, cave, which local lore says it is haunted. I told my family... That's our rally point. Jones's oldest children were already married and gone from the house, don't live there anymore, and the other five kids are, were, are between the ages of 4 and 11. When his oldest daughter called, Jason remembering, remembered thinking, if we don't intercept this missile, this could be the last time I hear my daughter's voice. Anyway, he, they used this opportunity then when they just got to the cave and were setting up when the next alert to erase the first alert came, and so they took a selfie outside the cave, and they were thankful for the event because they, uh, you know, they went through their little drill, and they were thankful, and they were thankful that everything was okay. Uh, he said it started conversation, Joan's children. He said missile sirens will have that effect on four-year-olds. They start asking questions. Who, why did this happen? What is uh, what if it had been real? Would we? Would they go to heaven after doing his best to answer his question? Jason's message to his kids was, "Thank God for this experience." And I thought that was just really a neat little story of a family and what they went through and how they how they did that. And I wondered how many of our listeners have their go bag ready and would and have a plan should any kind of a disaster, not necessarily a missile attack, but any kind of a disaster, do you have a place to go? You know, do you have a place to uh, to run and to take your family for shelter should something be uh, taking place? Anyway, I thought that was a really good story. Well, you know, it is, and we talk about being prepared all the time, and, mm-hmm. we, and it's very important, and um thankfully uh, you know it wasn't a, a severe situation i mean it was uh and but i'll guarantee you also during their experience they will have found perhaps adjustments that they can make in their preparedness i used to do a program with a gentleman who lived through the texas uh, one of the hurricanes, Houston, back in 2000, early 2000s, and they had a bug out bag. They had a bug out place to go to. And he says, what I learned from the experience, he says, was I did a lot of preparing I didn't need to do, and there was preparing that I needed to do that I mm-hmm. hadn't done. And he says, and you learn through the experience of weeding out and finding what is really the important things you need to do and what you fail to do. And, uh, and that was what the program was was about. You know, how do you prepare? What are things that everyone tells you to do that you really don't need to do? And he says we spend thousands of dollars 
on being prepared. And it was like we found out that a lot of that stuff was just useless. Right. And uh, so it was a very important story. And uh, so I, I think I, I hope that family has learned and, uh, you know, they'll be able to, you know, to uh, fix the things that they need to fix in, in their um, planned preparations. But I, that is a wonderful story. But, you know, they it did that really quick. Because if, if they got to their destination... Um, in 38 minutes. In 38 minutes. Of course, he ignored all the speed limits. I'm pretty sure the police weren't paying attention to speed limits at that moment. You know, they were ignoring all of that. And uh, he, they had a they had planned ahead. They knew exactly where they were going to go. Where to go. He what already to do, had his what bug to out take. bag. And I'll tell you what, a bug out bag for a large family is <laughs> not a small bug out bag. I would say you need one for each one. Everybody needs to grab their bug out bag. But... Uh, he grabbed the bug out bag and uh, loaded up the family, and he, he he grabbed his gun and his ammo, and he was ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was uh, a good story. I liked their attitude. They weren't angry. They were thankful for the mm-hmm. uh, for what had happened and how their family reacted, and you know, the opportunity to to talk about it. And uh, so I thought it was a pretty good story. Yeah, it is. They're a beautiful family. I, you can't see the picture on, on the radio, but it was a beautiful family. A very good example. Very good example of what we need to do and uh, be prepared for all kinds of situations that, that come our way. It's better to be prepared. Be prepared and not scared. They weren't one of those ones that were running around screaming, not knowing what to do, and uh, and so forth. And faith does have a lot to do with it, too. Yes, it um, does. There's, um, there was, this is by the Daily Mail. It's non-believers call on God when faced with a crisis, despite insisting they're not religious. Right. One in, yeah, one in <laughs> no four, atheists in the foxhole, as they no used to say. No atheists in a foxhole. There's a new survey has revealed that one in four non-believers pray when confronted by tough times, despite insisting they're not atheists. Uh, for atheists and agnostics, personal crisis or tragedy is the most common reason for them to resort to prayer, with a quarter admitting they pray for comfort or to feel less lonely. And um, so it's... Um, you know, it's it's just signs of the time, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think the, that family is a a wonderful example of the sign of the times, and uh, um, it just goes to show you, you're right. There's no uh, atheist in a foxhole, no, and, uh, you know, but yet that's a... what they that's but that's the agenda to to uh, uh, have this uh, falling away. And uh, I had a gentleman that uh, had on the air before, and although he did buy some of the. Uh, the uh, prepared food, you know, the storage food. He advised people, one of his things, and I thought it was kind of a wise thing, take a weekend with your family and pretend there's no electricity. Um, pretend there's, you know, that the lights have gone out and you're in there and you say, say there's been a storm or something else has happened. You have no electricity, you have no gas, you have no, you have nothing. So you have to see what it takes that weekend to survive, whether it's to cook food, whether it's to do this or to do that. <clears throat> and I thought that was kind of a wise thing, you know. Kids have to learn how to survive without the electricity for the weekend. That means no uh, uh, cell phones, no anything, you know. And, of course, if you've got a cell phone, you you can't use it because you want to make sure it stays charged up <laughs> in an emergency. Um, there's a lot of people that buy those uh, emergency and uh chargers for your cell phones and some of your other uh, 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 electronic devices, uh, whether it's tablets or whatever that you're using, laptops, and um, uh, just in an emergency that you would have them be able to keep them charged and have communication. But he, he advised that, and one thing he advised, too, with food, is when they have a sale on canned goods or a sale on this or sale on that, buy extra and keep that, and then you actually continue to rotate your food and such as that. And um, uh, he, I think he does a garden and stuff too. But he was just doing the simple, simple things. I think mm-hmm. we should be hearing music. I don't hear we it just do. yet. We do okay. hear the music. I can't hear it on my end. So I'm still on the telephone. I'm still without my laptop. Uh, battery will not necessarily help it right now. <laughs> We're going into a break. Your calls are welcome at 717-300-1218, 717-300-1218. You're listening to Melody and Beth Ann on Power Talk, and we will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. 
Gold and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossTheBorder.org. Years ahead of the dominant media, FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks with Melody and Beth Ann in the morning. I'm on the telephone, so I really can't see what's going on. And uh, Melody, you said we have a caller? Yeah, we got a caller right before we went into break, and we have Neil in Missouri calling us. Good morning, Neil. Yeah, Neil's a prepared person. Neil, how are you today? Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, this thing with being prepared. It's even better if you live prepared. You know, I mean, I learned to be prepared in the Boy Scouts, but uh, to live prepared is a, is a much better situation to be in. You know, if you have a place, you need a place. Uh, like Revelation 18.4 says, get out, you know, get out of the cities, be out in the country somewhere. If you don't have a cave on the property, make you an underground bunker. Because uh, this thing about having, you know, I think they said in Hawaii, what, 30-minute warning of a missile attack? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a common fallacy. You know, since the early 70s, when I was in, in the Air Force, we've had orbital nuclear weapons. I know it's against international treaties and the U.N. Charter and all that garbage, but these countries like the United States, Russia, China, and now North Korea really don't pay any attention to that. You know, they're going to put nukes up there if they can, and they have. So you've got less than 10 minutes. Well, and I, I don't think they, they said when they, they have 30 a, minutes. When they have a, a nuke, hold on, hold on, Neil. Hold on, Neil. That, that's a fallacy, what you're saying there. They didn't, I didn't, the article doesn't say they had 30-minute warning. It took them 38 minutes to get the warning the taken off because they yeah. didn't know what they had done, how to undo the, pushing the wrong button. But, yeah, what? a nuke would have yeah. hit a lot quicker. Go ahead. A lot quicker. Well, it, it depends. If it was launched from, from land in North Korea, it would have taken, you know, at least 30 minutes or more to get there. Okay, but, but if they it's never dropped said, out of a satellite, that. Okay. you know, you got less than 10 minutes. But if you're living underground to start with, I mean, that's my engineering specialization, was underground homes and alternate energy sources. 
And I've worked on, as a consulting engineer, on underground housing projects for off and on for the last 40 years. We, our first one was in Cripple Creek, near Cripple Creek, Colorado. And there's still people living on that in that survival community today out there. You know, if something happens, they, they're already underground. We used old mine shafts and, and tunnel back underground into hard rock with dynamite and explosives to make places for people underground. And it only takes 10 feet of earth to stop uh, radiation. So if you can survive underground for a couple of weeks, which is, you know, the half-life of a hydrogen weapon is only about four hours, so within a couple of weeks, most of your radioactivity is going to be gone. So... If you can, uh, if you've got a place where you can stay underground for, uh, say, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, and you're prepared to survive there, then you can come out, and uh, the effects of the nuclear blast will be minimal, as long as you're not at ground zero. If you're at ground zero, if you're in a city or something like that, you're you're toast. You know, there's no way to survive that. But, but the, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen on TV uh, super survival uh, no. shelters. Okay. But there are rich people that have that are buying underground condos in the old nuclear missile silos that have been, been decommissioned. And they show them on TV. They run from a million to $3 million for a, uh, a condo in these underground silos. And it showed how they're all set up with their water supply. And, and uh, I mean, these things have blast doors on them that are, are rated to take a uh, direct nuclear hit because they're, you know, missile silos. And the oh, super rich, those they're in Missouri. I don't know that you anybody know. lives in them, but I know we have some of those in the state of Missouri. Right, right. Pretty and close by where I am. For the super rich, but if you're not rich, you know, if you're a poor person, like most of the people I know, you need to just move yourself to the country, get you a cheap piece of property somewhere, and prepare yourself. You know, because you may not be able to run to a survival base. You may not have the time to get there. But if you're living there to start with, you're prepared, you've got your, you know, fuel source and your food source and everything right there. That's another problem. People thinking they're going to pack up all their stuff and, and run, you know, if you've got 100,000 people in the city and they're all trying to run at the same time, <laughs> it's just going to be chaos. You're going to be running in slow motion, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> on the it's, Internet, it's I mean, not on the no Internet, way. on the interstates and, and such. And, and the fact that he took off for the hills, you know, he took off for the mountain. He knew of a cave there that they were going to go to. And, and uh, uh, I mean, he had a good idea, um, and uh, he implemented it pretty quickly. But uh, uh, you can't do that everywhere. Right. Right. So, you know, you may have to take a cut in pay. You may have to get a, a lesser paying job. But, but get out of the system. Get out into the, you know, the wilderness somewhere, like, you know, Revelation 18.4 tells you to do, and, and uh, live prepared. You know, grow your own food and learn what the wild, edible, and medicinal plants are in your area. And, and uh, the Ozark Mountain Range is ideal. I mean, there's no better place in the United States than the Ozark Mountain Range because it has Don't a wider tell everybody variety, variety of flora than any place else <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> So, and, and right, it has a lot, of, good, good a lot of water, Thank a lot of caves. So, yeah, there like are a lot say, of caves, and we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of that here in the state of Missouri, a lot of caves. Good, good information, Neil. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. I like his his slogan, live prepared. I live like prepared, that. not just be live prepared, pre but live just prepared. Live prepared, yeah, I like that. I like that. Well, you, you know, know a lot of talking people don't about want to give up their lifestyle, though they don't want to. Uh, you know, they like it in the well, city, it is, but it, it, in the city is the worst place to be if if tragedy should hit. Well, absolutely, and uh, you know, but uh, you know, the jobs is a, you know you still have to support yourself, you have family, right. and, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I get that. It, it's a, again, it's what's suitable for each person to do so, and uh, but I mean, I agree with Neil one hundred percent. And Missouri does have a lot of caves. I know there was a a pretty large uh, cave area where when we lived in uh, the Ozarks, and uh, that was one of the places that uh, we had checked out. So if anything had happened, we knew where we could go. The caves are very good. Mm -hmm. Caves are very good. I came across this. It's actually Investor's Business Daily, daily and it is a commentary. And I thought this was kind of interesting. And I, I, it's the first time I heard this, Beth. And it's there's a lawsuit by Dr. James Hansen. It's Juliana versus the United States. And this is the most current example of of this, I guess he has children's lawsuits, and this is against global warming. 
and he's claiming that the government's actions and failures to act have caused climate change, thus violating the youngest generation's constitutional rights to life, liberty, and property, and have failed to protect essential public trust resources. Uh, and, and I just find this, I, I haven't heard of this person. I haven't heard of lawsuits, the children's climate lawsuit. Um, I don't know. It, it's just, and I, right away I thought of abortions when they're, you know, this guy's, this doctor is so concerned about the, the rights to life, but yet, you know, I'm sure he'd be the first one to uh, say that it's okay to have an abortion. I mean, it's just like things are just becoming so bizarre in this they world. Are bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> So this commentary goes on and it talks about this uh, lawsuit and, you know, so forth for the children against the United States. And it's like, you know, uh, so I'm going to try and follow up on, on, you know, but it'll probably never get to the courts or anything like that. It'll probably just be thrown out. And, you know, I mean, there's, <laughs> I don't know. It was, I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> well, it's, it's strange. You know, it's like you said, everything is bizarre anymore. Just one thing after another, just like the Hawaiian thing. And, of course, immediately these these lefties that want to bring – they want to blame President Donald Trump on everything. Well, it's his fault this guy pushed the wrong button, you know, and they use all kinds of foul language. And then they come back and tell the president he's not allowed to use any, you know, adjectives. And uh, not that I appreciate all that he says and does, but at the same time, I take it in the context of what, oh, my goodness, it's getting to look like a blizzard out there. But this is this is something we had talked about a long time ago, and this is a convicted classified documents leaker that went to prison, and it, uh, Bradley Manning, and, of course, you remember he wanted – everybody else to pay for his sex change. Well, I don't know if he's had a sex change or he's just wearing makeup and cut his hair and all that good stuff, but Chelsea Manning is what he once called now, and he was convicted back in 2013 of the biggest leak of classified documents in the U.S. history, and he's filed to challenge Senator Ben Cardin, who's a Democrat from Maryland, for his Senate seat. Now, I didn't think you could be convicted of a felon and run for office. And maybe because it was a military trial, it's different. Manning, who who became transgender during the six years he was incarcerated, had his 35-year prison sentence commuted by President Barack Obama before he left office. Maryland radio station WBAL reported Manning, 30, settled in North Bethsaida after she was granted clemency by President Barack Obama. Anyway, it goes on here, and of course, he he or she or whatever you want to say uses some pretty foul language on the Internet as well. It's, uh, it's bizarre to me, first of all, that we would even, we talked about this story back in the day when he was in prison and wanted everybody to pay for his sex change, and that was a big part of Obamacare, you know. And, um, uh, and now... Here, with all this turmoil this nation is in because of the corruption on the Republican Party and the Democrat Party and the Russians and everything, the leaking and the leaking and the leaking, and this guy, basically treasonous, is throwing his hat in the ring to run for for, uh, senator. Just kind of uh, talk about a nation that's – I. the term inside, outside, upside down. It was a Berenstein Bear book, inside, outside, upside down. We are so messed up that we would even consider letting this person even throw his hat in the ring or her hat in the ring or whatever you want to say. (laughs) That's bizarre. Everything is bizarre these days, Melody. It truly is. And I mean, and for anyone even to, um, who knows how far he'll get along, You know what I'm really trying to find, what I find interesting is sometimes these agendas take on uh, a particular, it's, 
I don't know if the person actually believes in these agendas or they're just trying to prove a point that they're this person that accepts, you know, these odd um, situations that are occurring. And uh, I don't know if that makes sense. And, and the, the reason I was thinking about it, I was talking to someone uh, this weekend and, you know, they... Um, well, I don't want to go into details, but it's it's they it's like they they want to prove a point that they're this good person without really viewing what the um, what the situation really is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hope it does. Mm-hmm. And uh, and 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 then as we go along this path, it's hard to argue, and it's hard to, not argue, but it's hard to show your side of things, defend your side, because they are just dead set that they draw the line and very little communication. And if you communicate with a lot of these, um, you know, the the liberals and so forth, you find that they're really not that far away from where you're really at. But they draw this line and they don't want to hear anything about it because it makes them feel like they're a bad person. You know, if they, you know, can't go along with the program. So it makes me wonder when you have this person who g- throws his hat into the ring, how far will he go just because people will think, well, it's the right thing to do because I don't want to be viewed as someone who don't like, who doesn't like people and, you know, what it, and, you know, his life and so forth and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to watch it to see if he even gets any. Well, he's filed. I don't know if they'll let him run or not, but he's he's filing or she's filing or whatever you want to say. He's and I didn't think he could file. I didn't think he could did, file I, if I, you had a if a criminal background. Well, that's kind of what I thought. And it's you know, leaking uh, documents, government documents, is kind of a big deal. Although you wouldn't think so if you looked in D.C. But it's kind of a big deal, and I don't know about you, but I think the American people are getting really sick of this stuff, and uh, they keep telling us we're not. You know, the majority of the people want this, the majority of the people want that. Well, I don't know who they're asking. They haven't asked me what I want, and um, maybe they know <laughs> better than to ask me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 it truly is bizarre. And, and you know, we... Um, you know, President Donald Trump, like I said, I didn't watch this, and I guess it wasn't necessarily on the camera. So he's being accused of uh, calling two uh, different countries a, a derogatory remark against them, and it's a true remark. He, he should have worded it differently. But the focus is on what he said instead of this phony DACA, DACA bill that mm-hmm. Lindsey Graham and his cohorts put together that are the opposite of what the American people want. It's the opposite of what the president told them he wanted. It's a total, complete opposite, slap in the face to everybody, unless you're one of those who wants amnesty across the board. So Rand Paul came out, and he's not necessarily defending the president, but he's saying if you continue calling him a racist, which they do constantly, it's, it's closing the door for any kind of talks any kind of uh, uh, putting together any kind of a bill. It's just slamming the door. And, of course, I think that's what they want. I think the left want the door shut. They don't want to see it really happen because they want to see him fail. He says in this particular article, and this is coming from the Daily, uh, which one is that? The uh, caller, the Daily Caller. It says GOP Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky He told Chuck Todd on NBC Sunday that congressional Democrats are making an immigration reform deal impossible by calling the president a racist. He said uh, the senator told Todd the uproar attending reports that Trump characterized much of the third world as, you know, a particular hole in the ground during a private meeting with lawmakers is destroying whatever goodwill might exist to achieve immigration reform. You can't have an immigration compromise if everyone is out there calling the president a racist. They're actually destroying the setting in which anything meaningful can happen on immigration. Some people in the media have just gone completely bonkers with 
uh, on the president, against the president, he says. And he says, since the Washington Post first reported Senator, I mean, sorry, President Trump's remarks, a group of congressional Democrats led by Republican Al Green of Texas vowed to force a vote on articles of impeachment. <laughs> Oh, they've got, he's got something. A Democratic representative, Maxine Waters of California, oh, echoed grief. these remarks and reiterated her long-standing support for Trump's impeachment, calling the president a hopeless and ignorant bigot. And, of course, they're not bigots. And, and of, of course, course nobody not. else of any other color is a bigot or a racist. But I have this article, and this happened in um, in downtown Cincinnati in uh, um by the library, and it's a librarian. The librarian came out, and it was a man, and he was randomly beaten by a gang of youth. It says John Watts, John Watts was several minutes into his sentencing Thursday when the judge asked him why he tackled a man at random, then participated in beating so violent that the judge wasn't able to watch the entire video. They had the beating on video. They knocked him down. They were hitting him. They were kicking him in the head. Um, I just attacked him, the 20-year-old Watts told the judge. Why did this happen? The judge asked, and the judge was Judge Jody Lubers. Watts, who stood in front of the judge bench, his hands shackled behind his back, paused for a few seconds. I don't know how to explain it, he said. Watts is the second man convicted in the... May 15th, 2017 attack near downtown, downtown's main library. Luber sentenced Watts to seven years in prison. He pleaded guilty last month to felonious assault. Now, these boys have been in trouble for other things as well. I don't think this particular boy was, but the other boys involved had been. But, you know, the judge is asking him, why did you do this? I don't know. I don't have any reason. Well, they were all, and I'm, you know, I don't. I am not a bigot. I am not a racist. I'm just telling you the story. They were all black teens, and this was a white man, a librarian. He did nothing wrong. Nothing provoked this attack. They just saw him and decided to beat him, and so they did. So he can't tell you the reason because the reason was racist. And uh, there was no other reason to beat this man other than I just don't like the way he looks. And... uh you don't hear the liberals, you don't hear the left talking about that story because it was the opposite direction. If it had been a gang of white people attacking a black librarian, you'd have heard it all over the place. But that's that's not the case. Yeah, so. and the only the, you know, the only time they can reverse the story is they'll they'll blame the police for you know going after the blacks and so forth. So they'll they'll, they'll use the police as the. But yeah, it's it's, it's correct. But you know what you have. You have these, you know, with the things that Maxine Waters says, the, the, the what the media is doing, the way they're pushing ahead with this racist agenda, it fuels, it fuels this violence. And it's like, but nobody talks about that. Nobody re relates the two things, um, how they talk, and and. You know what? Good grief. It's just not the administration sometimes. It's the media. Grow up. Move on. Report. You know? But we understand why. We understand why this is going on. And um, it is... Uh, but you're... Up, it, it's, you know, that's... It's, it's, uh, where did that happen at? It was in Cincinnati. Um, downtown Cincinnati, right in front of the library. Um, and it's all on video. I guess they had, uh, you know, had some kind of security there. It's all on video. And the judge couldn't watch it. It was so brutal. And uh, it was just, you know, <laughs> and they can't give a reason because the only reason is I didn't like the way he looked. And so, you know, they can't give a reason, but the reason is because he was a white man. And uh, they beat him. He has internal bleeding in his head. Um did he live? And, uh, yes, he did. But um, so, yeah, they're not getting murder charges; they're just uh, assault charges. Oh. Um, but yeah, he's he's in pretty bad shape. Hmm. But uh, it's um, 
it's just unreal the hate that's going on in this nation and uh um and it's prompted and it's continued because the left media wants it that way um they keep calling the president names they keep they're out on twitter and other places and even on the air of the mainstream media saying horrible vulgar things i mean you know, Ma Bell used to cut you off if you talked like that on the telephone and somebody reported you, but now it's just all over the place. And, um, you know, and then they want to get on to him because he calls this country that nobody wants to live in it uh, a hole in the ground, and he was a little more, uh, you know, ambitious with his hole in the ground. Uh, we don't even know for sure that he said it. They are telling us he said it, but it was not on camera, and I'm not going to defend him one way or the other, but I'm just saying he says he didn't say it, but the rest of them are saying he did. I think he did tweet it. Do we have, we have Joe from Arkansas on? Yes, we do. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah, Joe, yeah, good morning. how are you today? Yeah. Oh, I'm surviving this cold so far, and how are you? <laughs> I'm surviving the cold as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. I wanted to make this comment on the uh, false alarm in Hawaii. Okay. That's this. Uh, so, as I understand it, the Democrats are finding, trying to find some way to blame it on Trump, yes. although obviously <laughs> Trump was not involved whatsoever. But this shows that whatever goes wrong, uh, the Democrats seek to take some kind of political advantage of it by blaming it on Republicans, by blaming it on mm-hmm. whoever their opponents are at the moment. And so, but the Republicans never seem to do that because it seems to me if the Republicans wanted to. They could take some really justifiable, you know, truthful, honest political advantage of this by saying something like, you know, as I understand it, the government of Hawaii is completely democratic, completely controlled by Democrats, has been for a long time. And so what they could quite justifiably say, I think, is that this shows that the Democrats are not good at anything except demonizing and insulting their opponents and messing with the minds of anybody that's gullible enough to believe their propaganda. But as far as actually being competent to run anything and do anything and accomplish anything worthwhile in the real world, the Democrats are completely incompetent. You know, I think the Republicans could quite justifiably say something like that. Well, you know. Well, well, hold on, both. We're heading into a break. Um, So (laughs) uh, stay on, stay on, Beth, hold that thought. I was going to say we're going to a break. Do you want me to hold that thought, too? <laughs> Would you hold that thought, too, please? <laughs> 717-300-1218 is the number to call. And Melody and Beth Ann and Joe will be right back. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. 
Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Hear it first on FirstAmendmentRadio.com and FirstAmendmentRadio.net. And we have returned. You're listening to Power Talks. And as we were going into that break, we were visiting with Joe, and we were talking about Hawaii. (laughs) Go ahead, Joe. We were talking about the Republicans not taking advantage of these situations and say, hey, listen, the Democrats are in charge there, not us. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, yeah. So like I say, I think the Republicans could quite justifiably, you know, because I think there's a lot of truth in this. If the Republicans wanted to take a political advantage of this, you know, they could say you know, that uh, Hawaii is completely controlled, controlled by Democrats and things like this happening there show that the Democrats are only good at two things. One is one is uh, insulting and demonizing their opponents, and the other one is messing with the minds of anybody that's gullible enough to uh, believe their propaganda. But as far mm-hmm. as actually accomplishing worthwhile things and managing things in a uh, competent way in the real world, you know, the Democrats uh, can't do that. They're completely incompetent to that. You know, I think the Republic, I think the Republicans could say that, and there would be an awful lot of truth in it. And we look at Detroit, and we look at Boston, we look at these cities and states that are completely Democrat-run. And it says here, in an article that I have, it's an op-ed, that, uh, that uh, liberal California is the poverty capital of America. It says, guess which state has the highest poverty rate in the country? That's not Mississippi, it's not New Mexico, it's not West Virginia, but it's California, California. where nearly one out of five residents is poor. And that's according to the Census Bureau's uh, Supplemental Poverty Measure, which factors in the cost of housing, food, utilities, and clothing, and which includes non-cash government assistance as a form of income. But I bet totally you would also got, find totally, the rich people now, in, in their defense, California. They were broke and poor when uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is supposedly a Republican, was there and um, as governor. They've been broke a long time because they do a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> but I bet you would find also that some of the richest people in the country live in California also. So it sounds like what California is becoming is more and more polarized into the into dirt poor people, you know, no extreme middle poverty class. and extreme wealth, with the middle class being lost under the leadership and management of the Democrats. I think that's a good point, Joe. Yep, very good. Yep, yep. I think okay, they are a good fine. example. I think, uh, uh, you know, I was... Um, Somebody was asking me about some of this uh, the other day, and I, I mentioned I think all all the Bernie Sandy, Sanders followers should have to read uh, Animal Farm. <laughs> See what socialism really is. <laughs> they need to read No, Animal they Farm. actually need to take a trip down to Venezuela. Yeah. And see how that's working out for them. You know, they Good just point. don't. Uh, you know, and the thing it is, too, I mean, Joe made a point as far as, you know, the. The Republicans, you know, making Hawaii an example as far as for dem- democratic rule, and it's just like uh, the the media is not going to give them the opportunity. Who's going to report on it? And but yeah, I mean, the Republicans never seem to use anything uh, as their advantage, and this is an election year, and so for some reason the Democrats think that, uh, you know, by, you know calling Trump a racist by his comment about these various countries and so forth, that that's going to get him elected. All they do is call names. They don't All they do call, call on names. anything else. They just call names and derogatory remarks toward the president. They have no uh, solution for any of the problems. None. None. Just name calling. And oh, it's... yeah? Well, my dad's bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> They are like a bunch of kids, like you said oh, earlier. Oh, they are. It's just like grow up. 
And, and these are, and this is what's governing our nation, our country. They're supposed to be supporting our Constitution. Are you kidding me? You don't ever hear the left say anything about the Constitution other than we're in a crisis. No, other than that. Well, we've been in a constitutional crisis for a long, 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 long time. time. And, um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't have the book up here, but I was started a book about the, the Depression in 1920, 21. And uh, it's really kind of interesting because, you you know, they take you back to the politics prior to 1900. And, and you know, you, you sort of had the same kind of thing going on, but not to, you know, because, you know, not to the degree that we have today. And it's, uh, you know, it, it really is a battle. And if you don't fight for it, um uh, you know you're going to lose it, and uh, it kind of sh- it's kind of looking that uh, you know it's Jack, oh we it. <laughs> yeah we have Arthur calling us this morning oh, he's good. on the we line right now good morning Arthur Arthur where are you from good morning ladies how are you we're good how are you Arthur <laughs> we're doing all right doing I got a little snow over here in Illinois but other than that we're doing okay yeah we got snow here in Missouri too. <laughs> Yeah, I had a question for uh, for Melody. Uh, she doesn't do the show with Alfred anymore, does she? No, I do not. We still have financial survival, and we have financial oh, survival. Okay. At, yeah, no, the, the the program is still continuing. Absolutely, program's been around since uh, the mid '90s, so we're one of the longest yeah, running I know, I financial. Like I like I like your show, there, Melody. That's a good show you got there. Well, thank you very much, Arthur. So you ladies were talking about somebody was supposedly suing the government. Good luck. <laughs> 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 They'll tie that up in court so doomsday. <laughs> it hasn't worked out for too many, has it? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in the process now of going after some politicians in my hometown here. Oh, and they're not happy about it. They had me arrested illegally and everything. <laughs> oh, gracious. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're having issues over here in our hometown. Well, this is a climate change I'm, thing. I'm, I'm They're suing for the government. children I'm, I'm because talking. we've created such a bad atmosphere for the children that it's endangering their lives. Yes, yes. <laughs> With global warming. This is the problem we have in our town. A lot of people were abused because of this, this regime we have here. And oh, in yeah. the process of bringing it down. You'll, you might hear about it on, in the media. You, Whereabouts in Illinois are you? What's that? Whereabouts in Illinois are you? Oh, I'm in a town called Midlothian. It was El Capone's town. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect? The the then it took that meat come to I'm going to blow it all out of the water, man. I've, I'm working on putting a case together against this town, and they're in for a big surprise. So, okay. yes, there are some of us standing up to these deep state clowns. Well, let us know how that turns Good out. Good luck. Good luck. I will do that. Prayer, you guys have a you. really wonderful and blessed day, and it was great hearing from you. Thank you, Arthur. Thank, Thank you, you. Arthur. Appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, yes, America, we wish them the, we wish them the best. We've got to we start pushing him. back. Go ahead, Melly. Yes. Yes, we wish him the best. So oh, good absolutely. Luck with his, good luck with his fight because it's a difficult battle. And oh, they, my goodness. You know, lots of times, you know, they have, certainly have more against you, but uh, most of those who or most of us and – who are fighting back, you know, we got a bigger power on our side. So We do. Yes, we do. And, you know, so. that was something with the article about the family. You know, they were, they were thanking God for that opportunity, for the experience that they had. Um, they weren't blaming the government. They weren't screaming and saying, oh, my gosh, look what you've done to us, you know, <laughs> made our hearts skip a beat. Uh, no, they were thanking God for the experience that they had together as a family with that. Um, I'm sure that it, uh, it let them know, like we said earlier, what, what they need to do differently or, uh, you know, or what they did correctly and, and kind of analyze their situation. But they were ready. They were ready and quickly. And um, I don't know where, you know, location-wise they are, where they were driving to. I don't, I, you know, I don't know the terrain. But uh, uh, the American people, uh, like Arthur is trying to do there in Illinois, we've got to start pushing back. We just can't sit here and complain while drinking a cup of coffee, which is, you know, kind of what I do. (laughs) Sit here and drink my coffee and complain. We've got to start pushing back and start exposing them. And that's why shows like yours 
with uh, Financial Survivor, CSC Talk Radio, and this one, Power Talks, are so important because we do try to give solutions. We try to encourage the American people. We try to expose what's going on. Um, you know, there's only one reason that these places are are failing, and it's because of policies. It's because of the governing. And it's time for the American people to say, wait a minute, and push back. Uh, light up those phone lines and stop electing people that <laughs> have committed felons already. Stop electing these folks over and over and over again. I, I mentioned that in that article that I sent to you, and I've said it on the air here and on CSC Talk Radio. Presidents come and presidents go, and Congress stays and stays and stays. They play, and we pay. We pay taxes because they keep putting that burden on us, and we are paying by the loss of our liberties from the stupid legislations they keep pushing and the bureaucracy that they keep endorsing. And I hear music after I got on my bandwagon. Yes, wagon. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you, Melody. We will be Thank back you. tomorrow with Power Talks, and there will be more news, I'm certain. And we will bring to you that with encouragement. And uh, give Melody a call at 1-800-375-4188 and make silver and gold a part of your bug out bag that's 1-800-375-4188 melody thank you so much for being thank here. you mm-hmm. oh, we'll see thank you, you. bye bye visit crosstheborder.org c-r-o-s-s crosstheborder.org to get your print epub or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crosstheborder.org. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver, Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern, 
or 1 p.m. Pacific time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.